Brought to you by GTA. We start with you. The Department of Administration got its marching orders to pay invoices from GovGuam vendors responding to COVID-19. That's right, they're getting paid. Despite the fact contracts aren't signed off on by the Civil Defense Administrator Charles Estevez, certifying Officer Marie Kenga and Attorney General Levin Camacho. Why didn't she <laughs> sign any of these um, agreements? Well, it, the process wasn't done through GSA, so if it wasn't done through GSA, then, um, you know, I mean, we can't certify documents without a GSA contract uh, purchase order. According to Estevez, who's been the head of civil defense for over five years, emergency procurement is only after it's determined that a need cannot be met by the local and federal government. Estevez adding, for example, OCD procured personal protective equipment and other materials needed to respond to COVID-19, which went through the General Services Agency, or GSA. So when all of this uh, stuff was happening with the procurement of uh, these quarantine isolation facilities, didn't anybody with experience say, raise their, the red flag and say, this is not right? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I was involved until... Um, later on. Responses to FOIAs from KUAM include a chain of emails wherein the governor's legal counsel, Hai Hyun, was lead negotiator on contracts for GovGuam's quarantine isolation facilities. Guidance was even sought by the AG's office. In a March 25th email, Hyun wrote to Estevez, quote, I have forwarded all the unsigned contracts to you. The attorney general is asking that I complete a sole source procurement record prior to him signing off. I am awaiting some docs from GHRA to help me complete it, end quote. Those contracts remain unsigned when they hit Estevez's desk. On May 8th, the governor flexed her emergency powers under a public health emergency, mandating DOA to cut the checks. I'm not going to sign anything unless I uh, get concurrence from GSA, right? So if, if, if GSA is, um, you know, if they're not going to agree, then, then it makes sense that, that we wouldn't be able to certify the funds. And it wasn't just quarantine and isolation facilities contracts that went unsigned. There wasn't even a contract in place for meals provided by Capital Kitchen. So when I was given the invoices from Capital Kitchen, and you know, we, we tried to, to see if there was still the continued need for feeding. And so uh, when um, Capital Kitchen called me up and said, uh, how, do we, uh, what's the, you know, how do we basically get a contract? And so I said, okay, you know, let me see your last contract, uh, you know, go ahead and shoot me your invoices so we know, you know, how much you're talking about. And when the owner told me that he didn't have an existing contract, I said, oh, okay, uh, as of right now, please stop feeding. You know, because we can't, inc you know, I, I can't tell him to, to, to keep feeding because then we start incurring costs that, you know, I, I'm just not prepared to, uh, to pay. But because of the governor's special powers, Capital Kitchen was paid almost $80,000 for meals provided to quarantine and ad loop staffers. KUAM is still waiting to hear from Department of Administration how much has been paid to COVID vendors without a contract or unsigned contracts. KUAM asked Estevez if all of these would meet the test for federal reimbursement. I'm not sure. So it really depends on, on what um, you know FEMA will, will accept in terms of of uh, paperwork and documentation. Um, you know, if a document's not signed or not executed, I mean, is it is it you know a legal document? I, I don't know. It really depends on on when we do the exploratory calls and we work with uh, with uh, with you know with with the FEMA recovery division to to determine what's eligible and what's not. And while for now it appears it is what it is. Estevez says going forward, the Office of Civil Defense and GSA will be involved ensuring the proper protocols are followed. I can tell you that right now we had, we, you know, we're, we're working to procure these quarantine facilities, isolation facilities. And we met with the, uh, the chief of staff. We met with the chief procurement officer. Um, uh, public health was there. We, I think it was like two days ago that we met. And we laid out the process that this is uh, what we're going to we're going to require in terms of a hotel quarantine facility or a quarantine facility. This is what we're going to require in terms of isolation facility. You know, we got public health buy-in. Um, you know, the chief of staff, uh, acting chief of staff, John Junikov, was leading the meeting. And, you know, GSA uh, was there and they concurred. As we reported, the unsigned contracts for quarantine isolation facilities are set to expire in the next few days. Although there is an option to extend, it appears the government is starting from scratch and with someone else 
besides the governor's legal counsel taking the lead. So, you know, the legal counsel will always be there to, to provide uh, advice and guidance and, you know, uh, if needed. But, uh, uh, no, at this time, the effort's being led by, uh, by uh, the acting uh, uh, chief of staff. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Brought to you by GTA. We start with you.